So, in the last lesson you learned that data, such as numbers, text, etc., is stored in RAM memory at specific addresses. What you may not yet know is that when you run a program, it too gets loaded into memory the same way as if it was any other kind of data. In fact, as far as your computer is concerned, programs are data just like everything else. So in addition to some sequence of binary being possibly a number or text like we talked about, it might also be part of a program. Every single instruction that is ever processed by your computer is encoded the same way as everything else in binary. A program is fundamentally a sequence of many sets of ones and zeros, each set being a unique instruction to tell your computer to do something. Some instructions might be small, like two bytes, and other instructions might be larger. Each instruction represents actual high and low voltage sequences which are transmitted directly to your CPU chip. Your CPU chip is designed to do many different things depending on exactly which sequence of ones and zeros is received. When a program is loaded into memory and executed, what happens is very simple. The first sequence of ones and zeros, which, which is an actual command for the CPU, is sent directly to the CPU. The CPU then does whatever that instruction says to do. This is called executing an instruction. Then the next sequence of ones and zeros is executed, and then the next, and so on. This is done extremely fast until every single instruction in the program has been executed. This process of executing one instruction after another is known as program flow. At the end of the entire program, after all of these instructions have been executed, we need one final instruction to return control back to the operating system. This return instruction is special and we will go into it in greater detail later. Now, programs would be very boring if all they did was to go through a set sequence until they were finished. It is often necessary in a program to specify different possibilities of how the program should flow. For example, maybe you want a program to do one thing if something is true and something else if it is false. We will describe this process soon.